Good morning, welcome back to another vlog. I'm about to do my hair and a couple of people have said, how are you doing your hair? And please, just to preface this, I am so shy about sharing anything hair related. I really don't think I am good with hair. Please know that this isn't coming from a place of like, I think my hair looks great and that's why I'm sharing this. Absolutely not. But a few people have asked and you know that when a few people ask for something, I generally, being a people pleaser will come through. Hello, it's me from the future, currently editing this video and I realized that I forgot to mention the haircut that I get. So I get mine cut in a butterfly style and I get it done by Camilla who works at the Portobello branch of Blue Tit. Blue Tit is a chain of hairdressers in London. Would highly recommend Roberto in the Peckham salon if you ever want the best blow dry of your life. Who doesn't? They use Owe products in their salons, which are so, so great. And I'm actually going to get my hair trimmed by Camilla this week. And I'm gonna top up on a few OA. In fact, not top up, I've never really owned OA products. I've just I owned one. So I'm gonna buy a few OA products that I'm really, really excited to try. Anyway, I'm digressing. It's a butterfly cut by Camilla at Blue Tit in London. Okay, bye. So I've just shampooed and conditioned my hair. Most important step is I put some mousse in it. Currently I'm using my Nana's Mousse by Larry King. And I put like a decent amount. I think that was, was that five pumps? Mainly in the roots of my hair. And my hair is still wet, like it's not even been towel dried. Anything I recommend in this video, like I'm trying and testing, I'm not just recommending you something that is a bit meh. Hence why I'm not recommending you shampoo and conditioner. I don't think I use one that's particularly amazing. If you do, let me know. Massage that through, try and like scrunch up to get more volume in there. This is all about volume, this bit. I am now gonna go and do my skincare. I'll be back with the next step. I don't like how I've done my eyebrows today, so I think I'm gonna be redoing those. We are now on to the drying process. About a year ago, I tried out, two of my best friends bought Dyson Air Wraps and I tried them out and I thought, this is really fab. I really like what this is doing for my hair. I thought about it for a while and then I just started looking up Dyson Air Wraps on secondhand apps. Any item that I'm able to source secondhand instead of first hand, I'm absolutely gonna go down this route. If the Dyson Air Wrap appeals to you, I would push and encourage you to look them up on eBay, Vinted, Depop, Facebook Marketplace, whatever secondhand app is available to you, because there are so many on these apps for a fraction of the original price. I think I got mine for about 40% off and it was brand new and there are so many that have not been used that are a fraction of the price obviously you have to be a bit more careful you have to be a bit more diligent to ensure that the person selling it to you is legit just do your research and make sure that you get ones with like the right barrel length for you and that kind of thing. And also don't be tempted by like the newer styles because honestly the older styles seem just as good as the newer ones and the older ones will be cheaper. Now that we're onto the main uh, like drying part of my hair, I put on this attachment, which is just the normal hair drying part. I try and get as much volume into the hair as possible. And I do that by drying it kind of up and away from like at different angles to just try and get more, yeah, more volume. So like this, and then over my head. I want to do this until my hair is about 80% dry. So my hair is now like nearly dry. And I think the most important part of my personal hair styling routine is definitely the fringe. So I'm just gonna come in and put in a vague center parting, which is where I like my parting to fall. I did that terribly. And then I pull out my fringe. I also find it quite helpful to put my hair in a kind of like half up, half down shape. And then that helps me like find the fringe in a way. And if I don't have my air up with me, I'll use a round brush like this. And I will just curl it under with the hairdryer on top. You then have to put a roller in. So put it in a, yeah, in a roller spray it and leave it. I have now got the round attachment and I've got it on the full heat setting and the full power setting. And I'm gonna go like this on that side, like that on that side, and then I'm gonna go underneath. And I just keep kind of rolling it a few times to make it nice and smooth. And then I got it nice and tight turn down the heat setting for a few seconds 
and then I use this as my roller basically and I just leave this in until until I'm ready to party. This product I am going to recommend to you because I genuinely think it's brilliant. It was recommended to me by a legitimate professional hairstylist who did my hair for a shoot that I was on earlier this year. It's the Living Proof Full Dry Volume and Texture Spray. To me, the most important bit is done. Like fringe, essential, 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 essential. How many times can I say essential in a video? And then I'm gonna section my hair and start with the bottom part of my hair. If you are someone who is blessed with thicker hair, this process will take you much longer. I am not one of those blessed people. I have really fine hair. And grab the thicker of the attachments. You get thinner ones and then you get thicker ones. The thicker ones just give kind of more voluminous curls as opposed to tighter curls. And then I just look at which way the arrows go in the mirror or in my camera. I tried to roll it back and forth quite a few times at the bottom and then brought it up to the top until it was dry. Then I just gently peel it off. If you have rollers, this is a great time to put rollers in. I am way too lazy for that. So I just hold it, spray it, and then I sort of press it up and just hold it there for a few seconds. And then I repeat. And I try to turn the heat setting down just before I finish. If I remember and if I'm able to figure it out, because it requires a different part of my brain, um, to slightly cool the hair down, but also to ensure my fingers don't get burnt when I pull the hair off the barrel. Bring down the next section of my hair and continue. As you can see, we are pretty much there. I just have this one section at the back but this is just to create a bit more volume at the back i'm just brushing it up the attachment going up okay makeup done etc I am firstly just going to spray my hair again and then gently curl this out. So using this comb that I've had for a very, very long time, I've just refound my centre parting. And then I grab a wide tooth comb and gently, oh so gently, start combing out the curls. Just a little bit because my hair has never been dyed or anything like that so it doesn't, it, it tends to lose its shape really, really quickly. Whereas my friends who have dyed or bleached hair their hair just like keeps the curls and that kind of thing in any kind of style so well. So I've just done like a loose little brush and I'm also gonna use my fingers as well. And then gravel tea will probably do a lot of the work. So right now I'm gonna leave you to charge, make a coffee, get dressed, and then I'll come back and show you in a little bit. Okay, a little, a little bit of, a little bit, a little bit. Some time has passed and as you can see, my hair has kind of dropped out and that is just simply from me walking around getting dressed. Speaking of getting dressed, I know this isn't gonna be to everyone's taste, but I'm trying to push myself a bit more in terms of like being a little bit more adventurous in my style. And I absolutely am obsessed with this corset and I wanted to wear it for my filming today, but I didn't wanna have, I didn't wanna have too much skin on show. So I, have put a shirt underneath it and I think it looks quite cute and I've just got some plain like black old fast fashion trousers on and if I was going to wear it as a full fit this is what I would do. got some plain blue socks on with my loafers, trousers and then keeping with the denim theme 
and sticking on brand, I've got this bag, which is also by Revival, who make the top, um, but it's their collaboration with Marlowe London. I like it. Okay, I'm really desperately need to stop procrastinating. Now. Right now I need to film a recipe for disaster. It's been a few hours since I saw you. I successfully filmed my recipe for disaster. I then ate the recipe that I made and it was very delicious. And then I sat outside in fewer clothes. I've changed, editing my video and I then sent it to my co-writer for sign off. And so we're having a good productive day. I have sat down to talk to you about Ethical Consumer. They are very kindly sponsoring this portion of the video. Ethical Consumer are a not-for-profit multi-stakeholder cooperative. You might be familiar with them already. They've been working for a very, very long time creating such a brilliant database of over 40 different thousand brands and products in terms of all of their ethics, their environmental impact, things like greenwashing, things like human rights. I find this to be such a value resource and the reason why I came to them is because a couple of years ago my sister Holly received an ethical consumer subscription as a present for Christmas from my mum and for the next couple of months I was just using her subscription all the time as a way to research brands as a way to help me figure out who I might want to work with or not as a way to talk about brands in my content speak about greenwashing different fashion brands and she said to me I really think you should get your own subscription stop using mine so I did initially just using the their website and then eventually getting their print magazines because my sister would send my mum the magazines and then I would steal them from my mum and my mum said you know you can just get these with your subscription so here we are and I read the magazines on kind of weekends during offline 48 when I'm not on my phone and then I use the website I would say during the week when I'm researching brands and one of the reasons why I really like ethical consumer is not only because they have categories including energy fashion and clothing food and drink health and beauty home and garden, money, retailers, technology and travel. It's also because they don't shy away from talking about the political and systemic issues. As someone who really came to sustainability and thinking about the climate crisis from very much an individualistic standpoint, shout out to capitalism, I have altered the way I think about these issues and I'm now thinking much more systemically and politically. I do think that I am at a place now where that is where my focus is. It's systemic, it's um, thinking like much bigger and zooming out. But wherever possible, if it's accessible to me, of course I want to put my money into small independent ethical brands who I think are doing good things. And I do think that also drives change. But they are a really, really great resource. I would really recommend them. I have been using them, I think for over two years now. Hello, me from the future again. Ethical Consumer have very kindly offered my YouTube community an exclusive discount code. If you would like a subscription to Ethical Consumer, you can have 16 months for the price of 12 by using code Venetia EC at checkout. Hi, good morning. Literally just woke up like five minutes ago. New summer morning routine uh, inspired by Max, who's much more routine than I am. Wake up, go straight to the shower, have a cold shower, generally because I'm quite warm when I wake up and I find it really refreshing. And then it's cold, but initially, if I get in straight away, it's just really lovely and refreshing. And then make some um, hot water, which I've just, I just do because I've done it for however many years we've probably been on this channel. And then go outside and try and get outside, even if it's for two minutes, in the first ten minutes of the day. And that's it. So, just flung on some clothes and then once I'm back from my walk, I will meditate. I'm going to prepare my breakfast and this is my current favourite hyperfixation summer breakfast, spring summer breakfast, we're not quite summer yet and the reason why I'm whispering is because too, it's, it's too early to talk. Salt. I need to finish this yogurt. This is just plain soy yogurt. This is like such a treat. I love this. 
lemon zest, a bit of lemon juice, and then you mix that up. You obviously want to go for the consistency you want. I'm going to add a bit of watery yogurt. I also just toasted some pumpkin seeds. You don't need to toast them, but it just makes the flavour so much better. Depending on the weather outside, today it's really quite warm, so I'm going to put this in the fridge and it will all just like get cold and kind of come together a bit. And then afterwards we add granola. Oh yeah, I'm back. Now that this, you can see, is kind of like firmed up. Throw on the granola. Add a little bit of icy, this has got an ice cube in it, icy milk, drizzly almond butter. I'm just packing because I'm going away for a couple of days. My glasses are so smudgy. And I've recently taken to laying out my outfits and I thought I would show you what I'm thinking. You may or may not know that when I'm stuck for inspiration, I go to my camera roll on my phone and I type in the month and the year prior. So I just searched for May 2022 and I found this outfit that I'm about to show you and I really like it. Just a little gentle reminder, if you have clothes that no longer fit you or feel like you, please do whatever you can to resell them yourself or give them to a friend yourself. Find them a new home yourself as opposed to donating them. Fast fashion and overproduction from big fashion means that we currently have too many clothes being produced, too many clothes being donated and ending up in the global south. So I see it as my responsibility to resell my clothes and I would love to encourage you to do the same. This is the first outfit. Very creased, but it's gonna go in a suitcase where it will get even more creased. This little t-shirt that I've had for a while. And then these very relaxed vintage secondhand uh, jeans from a brand that I hate and will continue to call out. Please sign the petition in the description box. This bag, which you've seen so many times before, trench to kind of like sharpen it up a little bit. My Birkenstocks, some chunky socks. Next outfit, we have this very old t-shirt with this little hat. I wore a variation of this in Amsterdam, but this time I'm wearing this sheer dress underneath. But because it's very, very sheer, I'm wearing my little Migoza set underneath it. I think it could be really, really cool with my black chunky boots. And then I have this set, which you have seen so many times before. This outfit is very much inspired by, I think the actor's name is Lauren Harrier. I'll pull up the Pinterest picture really really chilled outfit it's a short skirt so i'm gonna wear these cycling shorts underneath which are from 90 percent and then i either think again could go for my loafers with a little blue sock but these are really really heavy so i don't know if i'm gonna pack them i might just wear my aforementioned black boots with it i need to pack underwear and socks and that kind of thing but yeah those are my outfits that's what i'm thinking i left you very abruptly in that last clip, I was, I think, quite stressed, if I'm honest. I was trying to do, and continue to do, I'm trying to, just generally, generally speaking, I am trying to do too much at the moment. I know I am, and I know I need to work on it, and I know I need to work on my stress levels, and the amount of pr pressure I'm putting on myself to do lots of different things. Um, so yeah, I'm in the middle of this moment of being like, you're trying to do too much. You need to figure out why you're trying to do so much. You need to do less and you need to just, basically I need to do some self work. I'm in a phase at the moment where I'm realizing this and trying to make adjustments to ensure that I take better care of myself. After I finished filming, I got the train to London and then the Eurostar to Paris. And this was to see my friends from the All Foundation again and to hang out with my friend, Chloe. We had such a lovely time together. We spent basically the whole weekend together. And yeah, I'm just so, so grateful for that friendship and just I just had such a lovely time. I was planning on doing loads of editing on the train and taking my laptop and like, it was a weekend. I just had to have a really good stern talking with myself, being like, just enjoy your weekend. Stop trying to do so much. This is also why I am ironing uh, at this 
random part of the day because I have just spent um, from 10.30 until 2.30 editing this video and then I raced through my lunch and I was rushing back to my desk and I was like, can you just, just do something else? Like do some ironing. So like I say, we're working on it. I am going to finish my ironing and then I might go for a walk and chat to a friend. And then I think I will finish my work for the day. Anyway, I really hope you've enjoyed this video. It's been lovely for me to hang out with you and I will see you very soon in the next one. Bye.